G'day guys, Ryan here, your copy coach. I'm here with Jason from Espresso Deck. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you, Ryan. This is a gentleman who had a crazy idea back in 2005 or somewhere around that time. Yeah, it was like actually 1994. Oh, 1994, uh, you know, I started when you yeah. first envisioned this yes. idea of having an undercounter machine that can allow you to have all the space above rather than this huge bulky box on top of your bench top. You can just have the essential necessary items like the espresso, steam wind and some of the water to allow you to keep everything clean on top of your bench. Everyone thought you were crazy. Everyone said this can't be done, shouldn't be done. What are you thinking? No one's going to buy that. And here you are almost 20 years later that now got a really solid design and not only that, you first patented it in 2007, but yeah. you now have seen other people out there yeah. replicating your idea, right. building their own versions of it. Which I'm very happy for. Must make you feel proud. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy because actually that gave the idea legitimacy. It was the crazy idea. When other big companies came along, the whole industry accepted it, embraced it, and so now I'm not looking so crazy. <laughs> so yeah, tell us your journey. Like, how did you get into copy? How did you start down this pathway? What brought this idea to you? So when I first pulled a machine apart, uh, I asked the question, why does all this need to be in here, in this box in between the customer and barista? And also as I went through the my copy journey, I was really sick of walking up to the back of a machine and sort of having to peer around and to chat to the barista or to wonder how the coffee's pouring. It was just a, a very natural progression. Well, it started off actually, uh, we could put the computer out of the hot box underneath and also the pump and also the boiler and it just developed into, hang on, we can get rid of all this, put it underneath, so yeah. So eventually uh, there was a few Frankensteins that I built yeah. and, and eventually it just came up with a really nice simple design where you cut the hole drop the thing in it's a it's a 20 minute install really proud of it so you've packaged it all together now so really easy for anyone in their home to have one or in, in a shop as well to have one just installed yep. cut the hole in the bench yeah and then exactly. just drop it straight in we have a, a a template for you just to put on the bench for whatever model you want and uh, drop it in and so the parts that you've used in there, what what machines are you using in here or you've developed your own? looks like the E61 head. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah the, the FAM Air E61 head, uh, big fan of it. I've loved it as soon as I saw it. Yeah. And I'm also a, a big fan of the uh, heat exchange unit machine or style of brewing purely for its efficiency. We've got one element driving a, a boiler very efficiently and taking advantage of the pressure vessel that's there. That's a really efficient way to to hold energy. I've never felt the need to put on other elements to try and maintain temperature when we've got the pressure ball, uh, vessel there do, doing it. Yeah, so, yeah, because that's the next question is, is like when the technology keeps advancing, you've got your dual boilers now, you've got your PID, you've got pressure profiling, flow profiling, all of the tech that's coming out. Where are you seeing your machine going well, to sort of, keep up with yeah, that? Yeah, all of that can be um, attached to this in right. terms of, you know, there's, there's flow systems that can just be integrated into this uh, for you to measure. Uh, we've got uh, shot timers. I actually prefer, rather than PID, I prefer a pressure switch that drives a solid state relay, uh, purely because as soon as you turn your steam on, bang, your element's on. It's not waiting for the, the, the temperature to drop before it turns on. I, I believe you're a little bit undergunned uh, if you're using PID in that sense. It's, uh, it's splitting hairs, but... Uh, I've got a pressure switch, commercial pressure switch, um, that has never let me down, particularly switching, only switching on and off solid state relay. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And that to me is the most robust, reliable system. Yeah. And that's interesting. And a lot of the people that do watch these are really technical people that want to understand the engineering, want to understand the technical side of it. So it's, it's, it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, in in the, the, the rapid fire of, of a pressure switch. Yeah. And also where a pressure switch falls over, I guess, is because uh, the contacts wear out. But if all you're doing is turning on a solid state, it's, uh, it's never going to wear out. You know? Very interesting. And so this is not just for commercial. Obviously, you've got your two group, your three group yeah. machines. Yeah. Here we've got a single group machine, which means that someone at home can have it. And you've actually got it on a standalone little bench stop. So someone can actually get this. Could be alfresco. And yeah. outside on the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> attached to the barbecue side. This is really easy uh, to install. 
And so as you've got plumbed water and you can have access to waste, I guess, or... Even if you didn't, we're, we're using... We're running out of water right here, but, I mean, ideally, you yeah. would have it plumbed. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you don't have an issue when you have it just running out of a reservoir, mm. the pressure, you can still control all the pressure and allow it. Yeah, yeah. you just... A uh, slight adjustment to the pump, uh, which is um, a satellite pump. Uh, I did that because we can have that satellite pump five metres away and just have uh, an ultra-quiet machine. You can hear the, the espresso dribbling into the cup. It's a delight. Uh, so, yeah, just um, just that feature is uh, that's how I've got it set up uh, in my uh, workshop, and I just really appreciate that. The design, like what led you to go with this design up top well, here? Well, tell you what, I'm a resourceful person. I know what I need to do, so that was uh, just walking into a, a, a metal shop and seeing the 50 by 100 box tube, which is that, and cut it off on the angles that, that work to give me a touch button and then the opposite. So, and I also like minimal. So one screw uh, here to remove the top. Access One it. screw on the back. I just like simple. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think uh, the, the whole, the three-legged chair never rocks. <laughs> you know, one screw, you're not going to have things trying to line up. It's, yeah, it's just that, that was the idea behind it. What does one of these set you back? So we're talking like if I'm a homeowner, I've got a really nice home, modern home, and I want to get one of these installed. Well, they say eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's really cheap. Yeah. Well, uh, like compared to what you can I, buy. I the weight of eight and a half thousand. So I appreciate you can get machines even cheaper, but this is a, uh, I mean, you, you could uh, steam all day long. You could have a, a, a really big party. In fact, we put these in hotels to do the, the martinis and all the cappuccinos for the hotel. So, yeah, this is commercial everything. I think whilst eight and a half, you might feel it. There's, there's so many machines out there that little roasteries or small startup cafes or coffee carts or anything like that, you know, you're looking at just for a small little machine that doesn't deliver endless steam. You're still looking at five, six K yeah. for something like that. So you go to your dual boilers, you're looking at nine, ten. You go to your under counter ones, you're looking at twelve, thirteen. Yeah. So from that point of view, that the price point actually is perfect. Like, yeah. well, well, believe it or not, actually, um, that's a ten amp machine, uh, and because it is a heat exchange unit, and we've got one element, we can do steam all day long with twenty four hundred watt elements as opposed to if we were dual boiler we'd have to have that plus another one so you'd be getting up to 15 amps yeah. uh, as a minimum and uh, and then that gets problematic for some installations is as it is a 10 amp machine what is the heat up time like in the morning i have to come and turn it on what's the time that i have to wait before obviously not before just the heads you ready but just before it's ready to go with the whole water great way to ask a question because the actual, it will be full energy being used to get the boiler up to full steam pressure. That'll take about five minutes. Right. From there, you really want to wait half an hour. Um, and I recommend getting yourself a timer. There's now apps, so you can turn it on, on as you're coming home yeah. so it's ready or set a schedule so it's ready when you wake up. Uh, that's how I have it. So you install these all over the world. So if anyone's watching this that wants it installed in the US or in Europe, 240 volt needs 240 volt. Yep. Um, so even in the states or places with 110, we build them with double pole switch. They would use two phases. It'd be a two phase machine or two hots in a ground, as they call it in America. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that uh, when a technician was to switch it off, both actives get turned off and they can go and safely work. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we, we've sold them all around the world, but we do uh, from two, 220 to 240, yeah. uh, 250 even in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. And so for you, I guess you're a small operation, but what support can you guarantee for someone if they're on the other side of the world? Like, how do we access uh, a technician or do we need to be able to understand it ourselves to fix it ourselves? Can you help them remotely? Absolutely. With technology today, we can help remotely. I've also got on my website a lot of tech videos. So simple things, but uh, yeah, I, I get it. If you're going to go and pull that tap apart to service it, uh, it's, it's great just to quickly watch the video of how to service the steam tap. So we've got all of those tutorials on the website. We've also got, um, a, a, my wife is a admin guru so all of our parts are listed we've got exploded diagrams and so on we've never had a problem 
Um, yeah, in terms of reliability, well, I didn't uh, get, I didn't ask you, and you don't have to say, but what what are the parts that you're using in here? What um, manufacturing, or are you doing your own manufacturing? I'm doing a lot of my own right. manufacturing in terms of fittings, yep. uh, because I'm using a lot of Teflon tubing, and I wasn't happy with what I was seeing in the market with positive connections because we've got 16 bars of pressure here and um, you know rated up to like 150 degrees uh, for when things go wrong basically teflon tubing is great for those temperatures and also you know for a technician to be working around you don't get burnt on teflon as you do with copper tubing so i, I really love that but, but i wasn't happy with the fittings so i designed my own fittings and I have them milled for myself. Yeah, so we can get them all out there to people as spare parts and whatnot. Yeah, and you sell them on, very reliable. You sell them online and yeah. you, you have all that oh, parts there. We don't sell them online no. yet. We're, we're still working yeah. on the on the shop front yeah. for the, the parts, uh, but that's just around the corner. Yeah. So it's standard 58 mil group heads and porta filter size. So most of the fittings or any accessories that you want to get, you can get them yeah, for this as standard. Pimp up now a uh, an E61 with uh, flow control. Yeah pressure gauges here i'm a minimalist i sort of uh, strip it down as much as possible uh but yeah you can you can go pretty funky i also uh have some extra d porta filters so you can put big triple baskets and so on uh in all of that you can it's as big as you can get fantastic yeah so the steam one tell me about the steam one is it cool touch yeah it's a it's a cool touch steam one uh so uh, it makes it just simple to um, to wipe the milk off, doesn't bake on. Wonderful. All right, well, I guess it's time to actually make a coffee on it. Let's go. And uh, try the espresso and the milk-based drink. So, yeah, let's get into it. Some latte art as well. Learn it more. Uh, no egg. Little burn. <laughs> and it's, it's all right because your brains are in the exactly. actual engineering. So. Exactly. I'll leave that for other people. Yeah, if you were too good a barista, I'd be questioning uh, engineering. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, delicious. Silky milk, full bodied. You, you saw how easy it was to make the coffee. You can steam and this, make the espresso at the same time. Yep. Endless steam. I'm normally almost endless oh, water. So <laughs> but uh, this uh, drip tray here always looks good uh, underneath if I was to show you that. Um, so so there's very little cleanup. You walk away, all of that stays under there yep. simply because of my yeah. little innovation here. Love it. It's just a, an angled plate uh, that that lives under uh, like so. There's a great headroom there to fit scales underneath if you were weighing a coffee, yep. to fit a large cup if you want to do a large cup. There's not, there's not much, um, and not, not many machines out there with more clearance. So for the, since you're hand crafting these all yourself anyway, what are the customizable options? Somebody wants some different colors, different yep. uh, options. What what do we got? Well, well, the uh, most popular are uh, um, electroplated finishes. So we've got antique copper, antique brasses, polished copper, uh, we've also got the ability to etch on the back of the stainless steel version, any colour you want, really powder coating. It's not the most robust finish, most robust obviously is stainless steel, second most robust is electroplated and then uh, powder coating. So you can have it in pink, you can have it in Blue. blues, any colours, can you have different colours for different areas, different timbers? Not really, no. I mean, uh, yes you can, but... You're it, willing to it, buy? Yeah, it would it would get expensive yeah. um, doing different runs on yeah. different finishes, but yes, it's possible. I have thought of it, but uh, haven't uh, afforded myself yeah. the pleasure yet. So a Barbie themed one would be pretty good for right now? Yeah, Barbie theme yeah. or uh, a retro, or no, not retro, reggae style yeah. uh, colour theme and so Yeah, all possible. Awesome. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. There you have it. This is the world's first original under-counter espresso machine before all of the mod bars, the tech bars, any of the other machines out there that have actually created under-counter, even though they might be more popular. This was originally patented in, in 2007, so you're the OG. Yeah. And it should be applauded for bringing this technology to the world because a lot of people 
wouldn't have even thought that this could be possible. I you mean, made it possible. Did actually. I, I reckon a lot of people <laughs> did, uh, but it's actually just the grind to actually get it uh, on on the bench. Yeah, the trial and error. Yeah. yeah, and the tribulations, I'm sure. So, if you want to get in touch with Jason from Espresso Deck, you can get on the website espressodeck.com. Espressodeck.com. And you can contact the guys. It's a family operation. You've got the whole family here today. Everyone is uh, part of the team. And so make sure that you do reach out to Jason. Ask if you can get one of these installed at your cafe or your office or your home or any hotel events, anything like this. This is a fantastic machine. I really reckon it needs to be applauded more and needs to be showcased more. Because what you're doing is brilliant and I really think it deserves recognition. So thanks for talking with us Thank today. Thank you very much. I'm Ryde, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew.